It's been a record year for ETF uh, creation. Join me to discuss uh, this and what the outlook for them is, is Hex McNeil from Wisdom Tree. Uh, he describes himself as a veteran of the ETF industry. Thanks very much for joining us. No problem. Um, as I say, you've been in this street for a very long time. What are the biggest changes you've seen in it? I think just the uh, how rapid the growth has been really and uh, the adoption globally. Uh, I mean, I think it's a pretty unique product that you can uh, have the same product listed on the New York Stock Exchange to the in uh, Indian Stock Exchange to Australian Stock Exchange. It's all the same product. It's unique in mutual fund land from that perspective. What is it that you feel that, that's dri been the biggest driver behind its growth? I just think it's better technology, to be honest. Uh, I think the, the old land of uh, mutual funds that you know, we classify as equivalent of black and white TVs, you know, you've got this new fantastic piece of kit, which is uh, ETFs, which you can trade on an exchange like a share, which means that your accessibility as, a, as an investor means that you've, it's just incredibly democratic on the basis that an institutional guy can get the same product you can get at the same price, really. But it's not a simple product, though, is it? I mean, so I mean, a lot of people say, you know, you have to be quite a savvy investor, or do you not? Well, I, I, I disagree with that because I think the reality is it's 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 a vehicle, uh, and the vehicle just delivers asset management uh, payouts. And in the same way, you get degrees of complexity in any asset management product, you know, from the most simple mutual fund to a very incredibly uh, complex structured product. You know, ETFs are just delivery mechanism for that. So you'll be able to get very simple ETFs and you get very complex ETFs. And I think any payout you can get in asset management land today in mutual funds or structured products, you'll be able to get in ETFs eventually. In terms of the growth, we're talking about ETFs as a whole growing, but what areas of ETFs is showing the biggest growth? Well, you've got sort of, I, I bucket them into sort of three different, uh, different buckets. You've got uh, classic sort of beta. ETFs. Let's explain that. Beta really is just, just basically where you track the market. So they're like the FTSE 100, the S&P 500, the Eurostox 50. So very simple exposures, but giving uh, clients access to that through a single share is, is incredibly powerful. And what's happened in that industry is you found that uh, that's grown very dramatically. It's become the core parts of people's portfolios and has really shone a light on the whole uh, wealth management industry and driven down costs. The next sort of foray into the uh, world is Smart Beta which is where you're starting to get uh, products that you know, try to do something a little bit more added value than a standard beta product and move more into sort of the uh, active uh, management land. So they're trying to actually give you uh, uh, strategies or trading uh, strategies within an ETF. So something like that might be a dividend ETF that's weighted, but you know, rather than being weighted by market capitalization, you weight by companies that pay dividends. And in that way, you might say uh, you might be saying in that investment hypothesis that companies that pay dividends are probably healthier than companies that don't, and therefore you would hope that product would outperform a standard beta product. The next uh, segment you'll see a lot of is active ETFs. Uh, it's in the same way you have active products in the uh, wider mutual fund world. You'll get that in uh, in ETFs as well. So I suspect we're now currently uh, globally at about 12% of mutual fund assets in ETFs. That's grown pretty dramatically from 3% 10 years ago. Europe's about 3 to 4%. And I think we'll catch up with the rest of the world very quickly, particularly the US. And I think over time, you might see that uh, percentage being 30 to 50%. I mentioned at the beginning that we've had a record year for ETF creation. Can it continue at this pace? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as I say, when I, when I uh, founded my first ETF business, you know, global assets were about half a trillion dollars of assets. Uh, today, it's about 3 trillion. Uh, put that into context, Europe's about half a trillion now. So we're arguably nine years behind uh, the US from that perspective. Now, I think we'll get there quicker than nine years simply because the US has done a lot of things uh, which, which we will learn from and understand and use as a, as, a, as a milestone as we go along. And I think we'll take those experiences and we'll get there much quicker. So I think you're starting to see that. Things like MIFID II, RDR, you know, the whole changing model in wealth management from being a sort of product uh, provider paying the fees to the IFA to being uh, where the IFA gets paid on, the, on a percentage of the portfolio, that'll be a major driver because that will want, mean that the, uh, the IFA will want to drive down costs in the portfolio. Talking of cost, then let's look at that and how it plays in, into a strategy. The fact that, you know, it is this vehicle, as you described it, yep. suggests a lot higher costs. No, I think the, the costs actually are driven down because uh, the old world, the old technology in the mutual fund line relies on going to uh, bespoke platforms. And those pl platforms, once you're on that platform, you're pretty well trapped. So you're, you're beholden to the fees that that platform charges. 
what the beauty of ETFs are is that they're traded on the stock exchange. So you, if you've got a brokerage account, you can trade those ETFs like a share. And if you want to change that brokerage account to someone else, you can do that very easily. So there's a lot of competition out there for that sort of business. And that efficiency of stock exchanges and settlement systems means that that cost base is, is really shrunk and really, uh, really reduced over time. And that's actually driving down costs in mutual fund land as well now, that uh, you're seeing that uh, people are saying, you know, I can go and buy a uh, FTSE 100 mutual fund for 1.5%. Why would I do that when I can buy an ETF at 10 basis points? Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, Hector Manil there from Wisdom Tree.